All right, after a year and a half, well, a summer and a half of daily drive in this rear wheel drive Beretta, I'll show you what I've learned about my DIY rear axle. This is a $200 junkyard Ford 8.8, .8, 373 with a limited slip. Uh, and I used Jeep brackets and uh, universal coilover mounts and stuff to make it a torque arm. I built my own torque arm here and welded on brackets and stuff to make it work with the axle itself. The Explorer was leaf spring, so I had to cut all that stuff off and put all my own stuff on here. This required welding on the axle itself and the cast. So I used the combination of welding and bolting at the same time, since welding to cast ain't super easy. So I've got a welded bracket here, bolted bracket here. Same idea with this, this is welded and bolted. And the main one up here, you can see I got the bolt as well as welding it. I also made everything super adjustable so I could dial it in where I wanted. So these are just Jeep ends here. I got these from Barnes Four Wheel Drive with some uh, tube ends that you weld in. So this is adjustable length. Other side's adjustable length, obviously. The position for the anti-squat. Drilled a bunch of holes for these brackets to make that adjustable. Uh, adjustable coilovers, um, rebound compression and ride height. The torque arm is adjustable, so this adjusts your pinion angle. The pannard bar, I got adjustable height as well as length. Same thing, this is uh, right and left hand threaded. And that makes it easy to get this thing aligned. It goes straight down the highway. I've put thousands of miles on it and it's all good. A couple of things I've changed. I had cheap Speedway coilovers in here that were non-adjustable for compression and rebound. I, I added these Vikings in, that's a lot better. I added more adjustability here originally. I just had these two holes for adjustment. And then I added more because I thought I wanted more anti-squat. Turns out I didn't really need it once I got to the drag strip. And that brings me to the latest upgrade, <clears throat> which is the brackets for this torque arm here. This big old plate that I welded on, uh, in addition to a lot of the bracket stuff that I already had done. I'll show a picture in here from the original build. But uh, this bracket here now <clears throat> is nice and beefy and shouldn't break. I broke the last one. Uh, drag racing, so that's where this project started. I also changed my mounting for this bushing. I had a trailer bushing originally. Now this is a poly setup with a bracket. This is a lot better. And originally I had the factory Explorer axles uh, with adapters to fit these tires, and now I have some Moser axles that have the bolt pattern and stuff that I want here. Overall, it's a pretty decent suspension setup that's pretty strong, fairly cheap, uh, and I'm fairly happy with it. So Stick around if you want to see me fixing the torque arm I broke. <laughs> and this project is a pretty good example of uh, just doing what you got to do to make things work. And uh, if, if this idiot can do it, pretty much anybody can. So at first glance, when I saw this broke, I thought it was my little 110 booger welds from the old man's welder. And the welds are actually okay. The sleeve itself snapped. So I'm thinking that was probably bending back and forth, and that's a fatigue failure. But this looked fine the other day when I checked my pinion angle. Well, this is somewhat concerning. Got everything out of here. Got a little witness mark from hitting on here with my excessive pinion angle. But uh, <clears throat> this is pushed back. Makes sense. I got more wheelbase than I should with that pinion angle. So this should push in and pull out of this pilot really easy but it does not want to even with a pry bar so what the hell's going on there i wonder if that has anything to do with why fourth gear was giving me such trouble um if there's something unhappy in the output shaft fourth gear is one to one ratio which will translate vibrations more typically okay call me crazy it almost looks like that yoke is bent, which would make sense why it wouldn't want to push in further. Okay, now it's on the tripod. I'll turn it and see if it warbles at all. Yep, she bent. Shit.
This drive shaft situation is not ideal. Oh, there we go. Yep, you out. That was the way to do it. You out. Okay. Oh yeah. You can see it there. Yeah, you sure as fuck can. <laughs> you can see that. <laughs> you bet. That, yeah, that's that's obvious. Okay, so now I'm gonna see if this thing is bent or broke. The bolt itself. It's definitely bent. Look at that. See the top? <laughs> so the bolt is bent and this sleeve is what broke. Yeah, I could tell this adjuster had some warble in it too. Okay, here's some of the carnage. Um, I was remembering this being like 3 16 wall tube, but it was actually 8th inch and 16th together that I plug welded. I forgot about that. So not as solid as a 3 16 tube. And ultimately, that's really what shit the bed. This bolt bent, but if the tube was more solid supporting it, it probably wouldn't have bent. Okay, now that it's out, I just got to cut it up and sort of mock this up and get this plate made out of steel. This is going to rotate the Himes 90 degrees. So instead of like this, they'll be like this where there's a lot more strength. And uh, it'll also be easier to install and uninstall the torque arm because that was sort of a pain in the ass. So uh, this should be a nice upgrade. Okay, after some choppy chop, we got this where it will actually fit. I got the fitment pretty good here. Made room so that I got a Heim fits here with a bolt. So I've got the clearance I need there. There's lots of room up here for a Heim. And what I'm going to do is make a bracket where the retaining nut for the Heim bolt that goes through also bolts into here. Same thing with the bottom. And uh, that way it'll be double shear. This is going to be 3 8 plate. Uh, should be super, super beefy, which... I thought the last one was pretty beefy and uh, that didn't hold up. So we're going to like just multiply the amount of metal we get in here. It's going to look like a crazy abomination when it's done here and it's going to be heavy as hell. But I need to be able to pound the snot out of this thing relentlessly and not have it break. All right, Summit and McMaster to the rescue. And I'm also doing a design change where I'm rotating these Himes 90 degrees because they should be a lot stronger that way. Um, I got the chromoly ones, figuring that should be better strength-wise. And I lost the other part of my half-inch bolt that broke. Well, actually, it bent. I had to cut it apart to get it apart. But uh, these will be a little more beef. Okay, now that I can finally get this yoke off, I was unsuccessful when I was doing this build from scratch. Uh, I could burn the shit out of this here and hopefully keep everything nice and solid. And it's needed one of these for a long time. This thing was rotten, plus... It definitely melted when I was welding on this thing before. Uh, that's when I was welding here. Okay, I got the welding all done. A little cool down and clean up. And now I can reassemble the torque arm with all the new stuff. All right, I am really hoping that this is enough beef now. Okay, I'm getting this thing back into race mode. Been daily driving it for like a week or week and a half. Because it's been like 60 degrees in New York in November. And I have zero drips since that new pinion seal. Hell yes. Okay, now I'm satisfied with this. I wanted to recreate this bracket that I had on the last one. Because especially when I'm welding to cast, I like to have welded and bolted. So I welded this nut to this bracket because that was the easiest way I could make that work. And I made sure I flattened off the welds. Because I didn't want to just have it try and rotate this bracket here and break this little 3 8 stud off for these 3 quarter inch bolts. So, so I made sure that I could grab this side with a crescent while I'm tightening this bolt. So all around now I'm welded and I'm bolted. Welded and I'm bolted. And if this comes apart now, I don't know what the hell to do. I think it should be good. And with the drive shaft yoke now that's not bent... Maybe I can shift into fourth gear. Final fitment on this anti-roll bar looks really good too.